All right, welcome back guys. This is Ivan from BrainInvest.com. And if you watched our last video, uh, as promised, today we're gonna look at the code that makes all of this work. And if you missed the, the video, you can check it out right here. Uh, that uh, In that video, we explained how we use different parts, as you can see here, to actually make our uh, little pan and tilt mount. And with this, I can control using a regular RC uh, transmitter. So I can just go to the left here, zoom in on this, all the way up, and then I can go up and you can see the whole setup here. So this is the BP, uh, the Vescor MP101 that we use for the pan and tilt. Then we have our little camera cage here, which house our uh, Vixia G20. And on the side here, right here, we have this uh, big battery, the 10,000 uh, milliamp battery that we use to actually power the converter to go from HDMI to SDI, which is right there. So that's our little box right here. And uh, the big uh, black plastic box is where all the big mess of wire is housed. So we're using a Nano. Uh, we're using a EBN, EB, EBENK uh, Lank remote because our cameras have the Lank port. So that'll enable us to uh, do zoom. And if we wanted to, we're not using it, but if we wanted to, we could uh, also adjust the focus. Uh, but these cameras have a pretty good autofocus, so I didn't implement that, but you could add that if you want. So today what we're going to do, we're just going to look at the code that uh, I put on the Nano to make all this stuff works. So let me zoom out and there we are. So let's, uh, let's go check the code and as we uh, go through the code, I'll explain which, uh, which part of the transmitter does what, so you can see how everything is connected. So let's cut here. I'm going to move the camera, focus on everything, and uh, let's go check that out. All right, so here we are in the code. So I'm going to pull up a little picture in picture here, this guy. Uh, so basically, as I go to the code, I'm going to tell you uh, which uh, control we're actually referencing in the code to actually uh, control the pan and tilt. So this guy is left, right. This guy is up, down, Oops. up. And down. I can actually go sideways too if I wanted to because we can read two things at once so you can go in diagonal. Uh, okay so let's start at the top so basically at the top what we're doing defining what pin is connected to what uh, on the nano so the uh, left is uh, 11 when I say left it means um, for the pan and tilt now so the pin 11 on the nano controls the left pan and if you look uh, from our previous video, if you look at this picture here, uh, basically that's where um, this pin is connected on the actual best score uh, pan and tilt mount connector. Uh, so the left pin, the right pin, the down, and the up. So there's four pins that are needed to actually control the pan and tilt of the best score. And basically all we do to make it move, we just put one of these pins high. But as you can see, we can put two at the same time uh, to go in diagonal if we wanted to, as you can see. So if I go this way, you see we're moving diagonally. So we can actually read and put two pins high to make us move uh, from corner to corner, actually. So let me just get rid of this. Oh, that's the wrong one. There we are. I got two, two remotes here. So let me get rid of this guy here. All right. <clears throat> So these are defining a left, right, down, up. So these are the cross, uh, corresponding pins on the Nano. And then we have the zoom in and out. And for that, as uh, we saw in the last video, we're actually uh, connected directly to an E, B, E, and K length remote. And we're using uh, the little microchip to actually simulate pressing keys on that remote using uh, the Nano by putting the pins high. Uh, you can see a diagram of that chip that we're using. Uh, if you haven't seen the last video, go check it out. I explain uh, how all this is connected and works. Um, so A0 and A1 on the Nano, so A0 will correspond to pressing the zoom in button on the remote and A1 to zoom out. And then the last uh, three here, zoom four, pin four of the Nano is connected to the RC receiver channel three. We're using three channel, uh, channel three, which will be the zoom. And channel three, if you look here, this is this um, 
uh, this control here on the remote. So if I go up, that's zoom in. If I go down, it's zoom out. So that's channel three. So channel three can either be up or down or anything in the middle, actually. Um, we could have, in the code, we could have uh, taken more information from the stick, meaning right now we're actually reading when it's fully up or fully down to do an action, but you could do actions depending on where you uh, move the stick. So if I move just a little bit, could do an action, but right now it's not doing anything because I'm waiting until I'm almost all the way up to actually start doing something and all the way down too. We'll see that later in the code. Uh, receiver 2, the variable receiver 2 is the pin 2 is connected to the RC receiver channel 2, which represent the pan, and receiver, just the uh, receiver variable, is uh, connected to pin 3, which is connected to the RC receiver channel 1. Uh, depending on the receiver you're using, you could have 4 channel, 6 channel, 8 channels, um, so the more channels you have, the more uh, the functions you could do. Uh, the one I have is actually a six channel, but I'm only, the remote I'm using is a four channel. So even though the receiver has six channel, I can't access all of them. So this remote only has four channel. But if, if you have a, if you buy a receiver that comes with its own receiver, uh, a transmitter that comes with its own receiver, then you would have, uh, let's say it's an eight channel, you could have eight different things. Uh, okay, so let's move along here. So variable to hold the RC receiver values. Uh, so basically we're gonna read inside those variable each channel, um, channel one, channel two, channel three, and then the basic setup. So we define which, which pin is what, so these are inputs, left, right, down, up, and zoom in, zoom out, out outputs, because these are going to the best core, and this is going to the uh, connected eBank, eBank uh, link remote. And we write them all low at the beginning because we don't want to do anything when we start up. And now our main loop. So we're getting the current values of the RC receiver channels. So channel 1, channel 2, channel 3 is equal to pulse in receiver high 20,000. Uh, we saw this function in the last tutorial. You could go and check that out. Uh, but basically how this works is that it reads the receiver pin. And when the pin goes high, it's going to start a little timer. And when it changes state, meaning in this case goes low, then it will return the time value between the high and low state. And the 20,000 here is just a timeout value, so if it stays high and nothing happens, then it doesn't do anything, goes to the other line. So we're reading all three here, so receiver, receiver 2, and zoom, so pan, tilt, and zoom. And we're putting this in those uh, variables here. And then we decide what we want to do based on those values. So the tilt, based on the input from the right up down, so it's this guy right here. So that is my up and down. So that's the tilt on the RC transmitter. So if my channel, uh, the channel value that I read in the pulse in is smaller than 1200, so that means the transmitter joystick was pushed up. So as I'm getting up, if you look at the screen, you see nothing's happening because it's still um, higher, yeah, is it higher? Yeah. Yeah, it's still higher than 1200. So I, as I keep going, oh, there we go. So if I do this, nothing happens. We get, well, a little bit. There we go. So depending on these values here, you'll make your joystick more or less sensitive. So for me, I decided that 1200 was pretty good. And if you want to know also how we read those values, check out this tutorial here that we did on how to actually display the uh, values from the receiver that you would get in the serial monitor and we actually use putty in that case to make the reading of the values easier so you can check that out too. So if channel is smaller than 1200 that means the joystick was pushed up then we're actually analog writing the uh, up pin 255 to move the tilt up. So basically as we're going up it, it will leave that pin high. Right now it's not going lower because I'm at the max uh, tilt of the system. So let me go up a little bit. Else, so if this is not true, is not true, then we're gonna check if the channel one is greater than 1700. That means that the transmitter joystick is being pushed down. So as I'm pushing down, then it detects that and actually does the action. And whoop, 
I'm going all over the place here. And if that is not uh, true either, so me meaning this is not true, this is not true, this is not true, then we're stopping the tilt. So basically we're putting both of the up and down to low. So that will stop the best core MP101 from moving. Uh, the panning, same, same process, except we're reading channel two. So if channel two is smaller than 1200, then that would be the left right function on the same stick. So left right as you can see uh, so it's the same rundown except we're using channel 2 instead of channel 1 like we did at the top uh, so all the code is the same it's using mostly the same values so if we pan down a little bit we're doing the same thing we're checking these values if it's left or right and if none of those are through uh, true so we're putting them low to stop any movement and the last thing the zoom is basically the same thing again uh, we're checking channel 3 instead, and the values are a little bit different uh, because the, uh, when we um, read the values of the transmitter and displayed it on the serial monitor, uh, the values were a little bit different, so we're using different values. And like I said, uh, you know, depending on what sensitivity you want, you can change those values so it starts moving a little bit faster because right now it's not moving, and if I keep moving up, then it would. So you could play around with those values. So the same exact code, except we're reading channel three. So that's it. That's the, the whole code to control that uh, we wrote to actually control all this stuff. Uh, so that's it for that. So you see now how it works, how everything is connected. So let's go back to our main camera and do our wrap up. All right, so there you go, guys. That's it for today, this tutorial. And um, I hope uh, that was... Uh, enough information to uh, actually get you guys uh, going and build one of those uh, pen and tilt system like we did. And if you don't want to do this, then maybe uh, the controlling of your next Arduino project using an RC transmitter that you have lying around in your house might be interesting to you. Uh, so like I always say, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for a video that you would like us to do in the future, please uh, leave those comments uh, in there also and we make a list of them and when we uh, have some time we will make some videos about them so once again guys if you're not subscribed and you uh, like those videos please subscribe to our channel uh, then you'll get notified when we post new ones and uh, that's it for today so until next time my name is Ivan and I'll catch you guys real soon take care